before you go, I want to just read you this. Micah chapter 6, verse 13. Micah chapter 6, verse 13. Because I want you to realize this. I want you to know it's not worth it what you about to do. Right. Trust me. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth trying to face the judgment of God just so you can get some ass. I'm going to be honest with you. It ain't worth it. Because guess what? You, get, you could get married, and guess what God says? The best on the foul. I ain't got no problem. Be fruitful, multiply. I got no issue with you. But when you ain't married, oh, you free game to God. God says, God says, God is telling you that a wife, when you take a wife, honor comes behind that. Remember, God says marriage is what? Honorable. Let's get it for him again. Hebrews 13 and 4. Let's show you what God said marriage is. Because because let me ask you, Frank, do you want to be honored on earth or do you want to be shamed? You want to be honored. So if you want honor, you got to walk with honor. You got to have a reputation about yourself that makes people say, nah, you got to respect Frank. That's what you got to do. Right. And here, here is the one thing that we don't do in black communities. And that's why all the nations always make fun of us. Read. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. Now, Frank, I got to ask you. Are you married? No. Okay. Are you dealing with someone right now? Yeah. Okay. Let me ask you this. The person you're dealing with. Is she on this sign? Is she an Israelite? Huh? She's Haitian too? Okay. So, here's the question. How long y'all been together? Huh? Five years? You got two kids together. Okay, you got boys or girls? Two boys. Now, let me ask you this. It said, marriage is honorable in all. Those two boys, who is their first role models? Who's their first role model? The father and the mother. So guess what? How you deal with those child, those are two boys' mother, they're going to deal with women the same way. Because they're going to say, well, dad did that, so why can't I? So think about it. You've been with her for five years. You have two boys. What's stopping you from marrying her? Well, well, well let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Well, what's going on? What's going on? Give, give me one example of a situation y'all going through. Huh? Oh, I'm saying I'm... Envy and jealousy. Envy and jealousy between who? Between y'all two? Not between us, like around the ones that we surround ourselves around, basically. So, so the people you surround yourself with. But before, I can I can really say it was like on all situations. So what it sounds like to me is you messed around with the sister, she got pregnant, and then y'all are on or off with the relationship. Okay, so pretty much y'all have other people in the relationship. Oh, so she's dealing with someone else. With, with other men? Mm -hmm. Huh? She's four years younger than you? How old are you? 26, so she's 22. Okay. Oh, so you're saying like her friends are telling her, girl, you know he's out here doing this and that. And then it causes an issue. Y'all have a fight. Y'all take a break. And then y'all get back together a couple months later. Like that? Okay. Okay, I get what you're saying. Now, now hold on. Let me ask you this. Are you doing that stuff that they're saying you're doing? No. So you're faithful to her. 
You never cheated on her. Never. Now, let me ask you this. Is she faithful to you? Hey, ask her truthfully, brother. Yeah, keep, keep it a buck with us. I can say, I can say she is. She'll, she'll tell you everything. I, I'm, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say this. I'm, I'm gonna say this. Women lie. So, so when women take breaks, sometimes they tend to deal with someone else during that break. So if I were you, it shouldn't be. Well, she tells me everything. You gotta know is she dealing with someone else? Cause think about it. If she's dealing with someone else. So, so she's only dealt with you. Okay. Okay. Now, even though she only dealt with you, you faithful to her, there's no honor in it because guess what? Y'all not married. Right now, y'all just boyfriend and girlfriend. And you know what? You know what God says that is in his eyes? What do you think God says it is in his eyes when you boyfriend and girlfriend? What does he call it? Huh? Yes, then. What he calls it, he says that's whoredom. Let's hoard them. Cause, Cause think about it. Think about it. Go, go to um, Leviticus chapter nineteen, verse twenty-nine. Think about it like this. Whenever you see someone bo be boyfriend and girlfriend, they get together, they have a fight, they break up, and they get with other people, right? But I'm saying in general, in general, that's what you see. There's some people that they stay together, they get married. Some people, but when you date. Y'all have sex, and then something. sometimes something happens, y'all break up. And then y'all go and y'all get with other people and have sex with them. So, a woman who has sex with a bunch of people, what, the, what do they call her? A whore. So, a man that has sex with a bunch of women, what is he doing to those women? They call him a dog. God says a whoremonger. So, this is, this is a law that God says against boyfriend and girlfriend. Read that. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 29. Uh -huh. Do not prostitute thy daughter uh -huh. to cause her to be a whore. You know that you know what we do today? We allow our daughters to have a boyfriend. We allow our sons to get a girlfriend. God says you're prostituting your daughter. Because guess what? When they get together, they're gonna have sex, and then when they break up, she's gonna go and have sex with someone else. What how God intended for it to be? The woman and the man are supposed to be virgins until they get married. Then when they get married, that's the only person they ever had sex with. God says there's honor in that because guess what? they faithful to each other. From, from the beginning with Adam and Eve, where do you read that Adam and Eve dealt with someone else? It never happened. Guess what? How Adam and Eve were, that's how God intended marriage to be on the earth. He intended for one man to deal with one woman. Y'all get married. Y'all be fruitful and multiply. Y'all have kids. It's not supposed to be you have kids before marriage. Right. It ain't supposed to be like that, Frank. So guess what? What you got to do, you have to stop. In fact, well, read on, read on. Let's finish that up. Lest the land fall to a whoredom uh -huh. and the land become full of wickedness. Now think about this. Hey, young man, what's your name? Dennis? Alright, Dennis, you got a girlfriend? No. Are you dealing with someone? Okay. So, how long you been dealing with that person? Just recently. You just started dealing with her. Alright, y'all had sex? No. Are you trying to have sex with her? No. You're not? Okay. But you plan on doing it in the future. Okay. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Cause I see you got a fresh cut. You just came fresh from the barber, right? You about to go see her? Okay. Hey, let me ask you a question. Did you know that Miami is number number seven? 17. Number 17 on the list for the highest rate of STDs in the United States? Out you know of, that? Out of hundreds of thousands. Okay, so I have hundreds of thousands of people in Miami. How do you know that the woman you about to go uh, get with don't have herpes, gonorrhea, chlamydia, condoms? You know, condoms can break. So if the condom breaks and you cast something, what you gonna do? In, in fact, in fact, people, remember how earlier with the, when those uh, younger kids were here, they all they was like, we got protection. Hey, who do you think you should fear more, the condom breaking or God? God. Re read Hebrews 13 and 4 again. This is for both of y'all. Read. 
The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. God says that if you are whoremongering, you out here trying to, you out here trying to get with the woman. You about to go meet up with a woman, go go on a date with her. That's your girl, but you ain't married. God says whore them. You being a whoremonger right now. Even if you have kids with a woman, but you ain't married to her, God says that's still whoredom. He says I will judge you. So what's the consequences for you having sex with women that you ain't married to? What can happen to you? Okay, if y'all if y'all both faithful, if y'all both faithful and y'all married, yeah, nothing wrong. Just think about it. Think about, it. Think about this. You've never seen a case of two married people that are faithful to each other catching an STD. But guess what? When people want a whoremonger out here, there's plenty of examples. And before you go, I want to just read you this. Micah chapter 6 verse 13. Micah chapter 6 verse 13. Because I want you to realize this. I want you to know it's not worth it what you're about to do. Right. Trust me, it ain't worth it. It ain't worth trying to face the judgment of God just so you can get some ass. I'm going to be honest with you. It ain't worth it. Because guess what? You, you could get married, and guess what God says? The best and the foul. I ain't got no problem. Be fruitful, multiply. I got no issue with you. But when you ain't married, oh, you free game to God. And here's what God said it'll do. The book of Micah, chapter 6 and verse 13. Therefore also will I make thee sick and smiting thee and making thee desolate because of thy sin. God says, you want to keep on fornicating? I'm going to make you sick because of your sin. Right. Hey, I, wa I want you to realize this. Do you fear the, the feeling of you having to go to the bathroom, you piss, it burns, and you piss out blood? Do you fear that? You don't fear that. You will, you will be okay living with the rest of your life like that? Well, you got to be on medication? You don't fear that. How are you always safe? You hoard, you you fornicating right now. Don't you understand there's a God that can judge you? Bro, I'm going to tell you right now. Ain't no type of protection can keep you from God. When God wants to judge you, nothing can keep you safe. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do, man? Are you going to take that risk of trying to get sick? Or are you going to just stop and say it ain't worth it? Frank, do you think it's worth it? Is it worth catching an STD just to get some ass? But it ain't worth it. In fact, get that. Uh, it's a fearful thing. Hebrews, I think, 10, 31. Yeah. Hey, hey, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. What if you get with her and she says, no, I don't want you to uh, have a condom. I want you to hit it raw. What you going to do? You say you would not have sex? Man. Man. Hey, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. If you horny and she says that, I'm going to be honest with you. You're going to take it off and you're going to go in. That's what you're going to do, bro. For, hey, think about it. Well, think about this. They recently met. You know that there's a study that women, generally in the between the first and third date, they ready to have sex? That, that's a study. They did a study because of all the single women out here. And guess what? That's why we have so many baby mamas in the black community. Because we didn't think about marriage. We just think about having sex. Right. That's why God says, you want honor marriage? I'm going to judge you. And get, guess what? When God says he's going to judge you, he does it. God said if we don't keep his commandments, we go into slavery. Did right. that happen to us, Frank? We still in the slavery. So guess what that means? God judged us and it's still happening to this day. So why do we think when God says, if you don't honor marriage, I will judge you. And he said, he will make you sick according to your sin. That means that you can get an STD even if you have protection on. Right. Guys, if God wants to judge you, if, if, read that. Hebrews 10, 31. The book of Hebrews, the 10 verse 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. God said, you better fear me. Guess what? It's a fearful thing to go through the judgment of God. Slavery was so bad, we suffer the effects of it to this day. Right. And we want to play games with God and say, I want to go have sex. With, and then God says, okay, I'll make you sick. You won't make me sick, God. I got protection. God will make it to where you will still catch an STD. You will be burning. And when you burn it, guess what we're going to say? God, why? Help me, God. Please don't let it be an STD. 
That's how we get down. We play games with God, but God ain't playing games with us. God said, listen, listen, okay, you want to play a game? Let's play a game called life and death. Which one you want to choose? You want to live or you want to die? Which one you want, bro? You want to live? What about you? You want to live? What do you got to do to live? Proverbs 7 and 2. Let's get that again. Hey, Proverbs 126. All right, Proverbs 126. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 26. Huh? I will also laugh at your calamity. God says, when when it's hit the fan, when you, you see the Walgreens over there where it says labs, when you got to go to Walgreens to get a test for a chlamydia or gonorrhea, and you saying, please, God, please, guess what God said? He said he's going to laugh at you. Right. When you going when you going through your hell, God said, I'm going to laugh at you. I'm going to be up there in the heavens with the angels saying, look at him. Look at Frank. Look at Frank. I forgot I forgot your name, man. What's your name? Dennis. He said, look at Dennis. He thought he could play games with me. Now I got judgment on him. Right. Because he wanted to play games. Okay, let's play a game. The rest of your life, you're going to be pissing blood. Bring it up. Every time you go to the bathroom, you're going to feel that burn. Right. You're going to be saying, let it burn like Usher, bro. You don't want to do that. You don't want to go against God. Read out. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. God said he going to mock you. He going to say, hey, you know, what do black parents say? When they say, you better not do this because it's going to happen. You do it anyway, then what they said happens, what do they say to you after? They say, I told you so. Right. This is what God going to be saying. I told you so. I told you, I said, I will judge if you're on a marriage. So don't come crying to me now. I done told you already. That's him mocking you. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. And finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord. His word. His word.